welcome to another week in my fourth grade class. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. This is week 25 of the school year and it is a Tuesday since yesterday was President's Day. Today is February 21st, 2023 and I just want to give you a rundown of what we ended up doing today with both of my classes. So one of my classes is an advanced class and the other class is an ESOL class. Not all of the students are ELL learners, but the majority is. So I started this morning with my ELO group and they're a little bit behind from my other group. And what we did was we reviewed cause and effect. So they had an activity to do under desk as soon as they came in as a warm up. We call it Smart Start. And it just gave them a little paragraph on the gold rush, the California gold rush, and they had to find some cause and effect relationships. So this is the handout. I got it from education.com, which I have a little subscription on. And they went over the little signal words for cause and effect and they had to find it within the paragraph itself. And then on the back, they had to fill in the cause and effect chart and answer some of the questions at the bottom as it related to the passage. After that, I showed them the cause and effect flow vocabulary video. And then we took a look at our anchor text for unit four weeks one and two, which is see how they run since we already read it last week. Today, we just wanted to find some cause and effect relationships for them and they completed a graphic organizer on that and this is the graphic organizer right here so you are able to see we went through different parts of the passage to look on different cause and effect relationships so be a citizen they're able to vote the constitution was not perfect the bill of rights was written kids get excited to vote with kids voting usa three to five percent more pair of their parents end up voting so then i had them come up with one final cause and effect relationship on their own then we read the pair selection, The Birth of American Democracy, and compared it and contrasted it to this passage, See How They Run. And that was the end of reading for that block. And then we went into our writing block. For our writing block, the activity that I have been trying to do with them all these weeks, but we haven't been able to find time since I'm trying to catch up in reading. And then we've had all this testing happening. But we did the sorting activity for the evidence for the argumentative essay, Why Was the Civil Rights Movement Needed? So the students had a blue paper with two buckets on the paper and they had to sort the little yellow pieces of paper to create two buckets that had similar details together. Now this same activity was done by my block one, which I had this afternoon, and they actually got to finish it. My block two will have to finish it tomorrow, but my block one is done and they can now go ahead and start writing those body paragraphs to then complete their civil rights movement argumentative essay. So here are those sorting activities right here that the students created so you can get some idea of what they did. And they're using that. This is the prompt right here that we had already analyzed. This is a blank one. They use that information to then go ahead and individually add it to their own little sorting activity. So they have their reason or idea and then their evidence as much as they can fit they write their topic sentence and eventually tomorrow they will work on writing each body paragraph at least to get them started so that they can then be ready for this paper right here where they will write their introduction body paragraph one body paragraph two on the back and the conclusion now for block one which i had this afternoon today tuesday they worked in reading with a new unit which is why do we, or how do inventions and technology affect our lives? So I introduced the unit to them by going over the weekly opener video, the study blast. I read them the read aloud, Goodbye Icebox, which talks about a historical fiction story about a girl whose family replaces their icebox with a refrigerator. So we're talking about those changes in technology. And then we read the shared read a telephone mix up, which talks about how the telephone was installed in a town in Ohio and going through how the people felt before the phones were installed and how they felt afterwards. So we're also talking about character perspective. With that group, I was able to fully read together with them the shared read and answer the fine text evidence questions. So tomorrow when they start with me, they will reread the story on their own and they will complete a character perspective graphic organizer. 
that is basically what we worked on today. It was a very productive day, I have to say. And let me show you how my lesson plans look on Google Keep. Before that, I also wanted to show you that digitally, I created the buckets once every group had correctly sorted the evidence. I just put it on a PowerPoint so that they have it here and I have it for reference. But let's go to that Google Keep. So here it is. So again, yesterday was President's Day. I have my lesson plans here so I can look at it digitally and kind of reflect on what I was doing this week. But I also have it in my Google Keep right here so that I can actually go ahead and click it off. So I know for uh, example, right now, we did the civil rights argumentative essay. We did the Evan sorting. Not all groups got to do the body paragraph writing. So that is moved over here. because I did give myself finished writing essay over here. And what I'm gonna do, whoever hasn't finished it, they'll just take it home for homework and they can finish it and turn it in next week, Monday. But here is what I plan to do today. And I checked it off. So my block two in the a.m., my block one in the p.m., and then that's it. So tomorrow, I start with my block one. So we will go ahead and do what I just asked you to do, plus review vocabulary. With my block two, we're going to do a little gim kit review before they take their reading assessment on performance matters. So that is my plan for this week. Here is Thursday, and here's what I plan to do on Thursday, and I can just check it off as I go. And here is Friday. So that's all I wanted to share for today, Tuesday. I will see you tomorrow. We have made it to the end of the day on Wednesday, and we just had a very brief faculty meeting, and the principal is allowing us to go plan at a more comfortable place. So after I film this clip, I'm gonna grab my things and go there. So today I started with my block one, my homeroom, and we ended up rereading the passage, a telephone mix up from Wonders Unit 4, weeks three and four. And after they reread the story, we went over character perspective. So the students worked on completing a graphic organizer and character perspective, as well as answering the respond to reading questions, which the students helped me put together using the sentence starters that the book provides for us and making sure that we address all parts of the question relating to how does the setting contribute to the story's plot. Then it was time for lunch. And after that, I grabbed my blog two, which is my PM class for today, Wednesday. And what they were doing was they were reviewing homophones, homographs, and we did a little bit of reviewing of Latin roots. They had that as a smart start activity as soon as they came in from lunch. And we did a little game from education.com on homographs and homophones. And this was the activity for the homophones. And this one was the one for the homographs. And this is the game that we played, which had 10 questions and students volunteer their answers. After we did that, I went ahead and played the game kit game that I played with my block one last week that I didn't get a chance to play with my block two, going over Latin roots, homophones, and homographs. They had an opportunity to play humans versus zombies, and this time zombies won. So then after that, they went ahead and started their wonders assessment, the reading assessment on performance matters. And I met with my 10 ESO level ones and two students so that they can do the scaffolded assessment along with me. And that's pretty much what we ended up doing today. Tomorrow, I still have a few students that need to finish that assessment. And I'll have my ESO students who are done with the scaffolded test work on Imagine Learning so they can get their minutes for their one hour a week of Imagine Learning. It is a program that helps them learn English. And yeah, continue with my block one going over the anchor text, which is the moon over star, beautiful story, historical fiction about the moon landing. So that is all that I have for today. Wednesday, oh, it's been uh, a lot of stuff that we actually ended up doing. Oh, and I forgot to say that my homeroom block one ended up doing the cause and effect activity that my block two did yesterday morning. So we did go over that and answered it. So it was a nice review for them. And yeah, that's where we are. All right, so I will see you tomorrow. It's the end of the day, Thursday, and we have made it, kids. We have made it. I just finished my Minecraft club and finished dismissing the students and making sure they get picked up. 
Today, I started with my block two this morning and they were basically working on finishing the assignment that I was gonna give them for homework last week, but we ended up doing as classwork. So we started by finishing that up and then I gave them the computers because I had some students that needed to finish their wonders test and some students that needed to finish their iReady diagnostic, which tomorrow is the deadline. Then for my afternoon group, I started right off the bat with computers for them because I had more students in that class that needed to catch up in some of the wonders assessments that they owed me and a few students that needed to finish their iReady reading diagnostic and I'm happy to say they all finished both the wonders assessments that were a little bit behind in and the iReady reading diagnostic so yeah that's basically my day um there wasn't much more going on because I just needed the room to be quiet so those students can finish. The other students that have finished everything were just working on getting their iReady minutes done. So that is what our Thursday was and that's all I have to share with you. So I will see you tomorrow. We've made it to the end of the day on Friday and I just finished my lesson plans. I also finished working on some data because my one-on-one -on -one data chat with the leadership team is happening next week, Tuesday. And I have to really compare how the students did in iReady AP2 and AP3. I mean, AP2, AP1 and AP2, I mean. I don't know what I said. But I also have to compare how they did on the FAST, which is the new state assessment, the first progress monitoring compared to the second progress monitoring. So I have to look at each individual student, see how much they went up, how much they went down if they went down, which I had a few, and what my plan is for my students after I group them into three different groups that they wanted us to do. So I worked on that and I finished my lesson plans for next week. It is a five day school week next week. So I had a pretty good day with the students. This morning with my block one, they went ahead and read the paired selection, star parties, and we actually read the anchor text and the paired selection this morning. The anchor text was Moon Over Star, which was a historical fiction about the moon landing, and the main character is May, and it gives an allusion to Mae Jameson, so it was a great way for the students to connect that. And Star Parties was an expository text that used description text structure to describe different star parties and how you can become a part of one so that they can look in the night sky at different stars. So that's what we did with block one. Block two ended up reading the shared selection, a telephone mix up, and they completed a character perspective graphic organizer, the same as my other class did earlier this week. And that's what we ended up doing for that particular story. So for them, I need to make sure that they catch up with the class next week, but slowly but surely we're gonna get there. Oh, it's been, you know, a whirlwind of a day, but we got a lot of stuff done. So let me show you a glimpse of my Google Keep where I store my lesson plans for next week. So here's my Google Keep for next week. My lesson plans are right there. If I click it, it gets bigger. And these are my plans for each of my blocks for each day next week. Oh, I did forget that my block one also did a reading response. We did a... Graphic organizer and character perspective from May's perspective. And then we did a response to reading question from their reading writing companion, which was this question right here. And this is my sample writing. So yeah, that's pretty much what we ended up doing today. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on week 25 of this school year. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.